the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik dear friends welcome to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard the story of draupadi samvara and how arjuna passed the difficult test to win her as draupadi garlanded arjuna drupad stood up and applauded from the stands but a thought kept on brewing in his mind who is this young brahmin is this by any chance arjuna in disguise although he had heard of the pandavas death in varanavata he was never convinced that heroes like arjuna and bhima could die in a simple house fire he had encountered arjuna in battle and knew very well how skilled and powerful a warrior he was in fact he had designed this context with the secret motive to find arjuna for he knew that very few people on this earth could pass such a difficult test and arjuna was one of them but this brahman drupad's chain of thoughts were suddenly shattered by angry shouts and protests from the hall the invited kings and princes were furious at drupad how could drupad allow a brahman to participate in this contest doesn't he have any respect for royalty they were the invited guests the real contenders the brahmins were supposed to be mere spectators nothing more this was nothing but drupad's crude attempt to insult the invited monarchs like duryodhana dushashana karna salya and others drupad must be punished they yelled they picked up their weapons and menacingly moved towards drupad to attack him yudhishthira called arjuna and said arjuna king drupad is now your father in law our relative we must protect him you and bhima go ahead and defend the king while we take draupadi outside to safety arjuna picked up the bow and stood ready to defend drupad while bhima prutted a tree and used the trunk as his weapon and waited for the kings to attack him although the kings were taken aback to see bhima prut a tree with his bare hands but they were too angry to think twice with uncontrolled frenzy they pounced upon bhima but with one swift blow of the trunk bhima swept away the attackers king shalya of the madra kingdom was a great wrestler he jumped on bhima and tried to pin him down but bhima shook him off and then he lifted him up over his shoulder and threw him down to the marble floor but he made sure that shalya was not mortally injured since he happened to be madri's brother and hence their uncle in the meantime provoked by duryodhana and the other kings karna attacked arjuna with a barrage of arrows arjuna destroyed them all in mid air a fierce battle ensued between karna and arjuna karna used all his skills and weapons to attack arjuna but not a single weapon could touch arjuna he countered them all and stood defiantly laughing at karna karna realized that his opponent was no ordinary brahmin he stopped attacking arjuna and asked who are you brahmin your skills are really impressive only few people like my guru parashurama lord indra lord vishnu or arjuna could counter my weapons are you any one of them arjuna laughed and said i am only a simple brahmin karna so attack me and defeat me if you dare karna knew that it would be impossible to defeat the brahmin he put down his bow and said pardon me o brahmin i shouldn't have attacked you you have won draupadi with your skills hence you deserve to be her husband saying this he walked away from the hall but the other kings were still trying to fight the pandava brothers especially bhima by this time krishna was absolutely certain about the identity of the two brahmins he was sure that they were none other than bhima 
and Arjuna. He told Balarama, Brother, I think we have seen enough of this fight. It should stop now. Krishna walked down to the floor and stood between the kings and the Pandava brothers and said, Friends, put down your arms. You are fighting for nothing. This young Brahmin has passed King Drupad's test and has rightfully won Draupadi as his bride. Why don't you accept this fact and go home? I think it would be best for your health as well as your kingdoms. The kings didn't have the courage to argue with Lord Krishna. So they put down their arms and slowly dispersed from the Sayamvara hall. Arjuna and Bhima didn't wait either. They quickly slipped out and met Yudhishthira who was waiting outside with Draupadi and their two brothers, Nakula and Sahadeva. And without wasting any more time, they walked back to the potter's home where Kunti was waiting for them. As they left the palace premises, Drupad called Dhishtadumna aside and said, Go and follow these Brahmins. Find out who they are and where they come from. But make sure they don't notice you. Go. Trishtadumna covered himself in a shawl and followed the Pandavas from a distance to their home. When the Pandavas reached home, Kunti was busy in the kitchen preparing dinner for her boys. Even before the brothers stepped inside the house with Draupadi, excited Arjuna called out, Mother, look what we have brought for you today. Kunti thought that her boys must have brought their usual grains and vegetables from their door-to-door begging. Without looking at them, she said, Whatever it is, divide it equally amongst yourselves. The Pandava brothers were shocked to hear this. Bhima said, But mother, for see what we have brought. Arjuna has won King Drupad's daughter Draupadi's hand in marriage at the Swayamvara. Kunti came out and the moment she saw Draupadi, she knew she has made a grave mistake. Oh no, what a terrible thing I have said, she lamented. Kunti had always spoken the truth, but she knew what she wished cannot come true. How could Draupadi be divided amongst the five brothers? She looked anxiously at Yudhishthira and said, Yudhishthira, today I have fallen from my path of truth. I have sinned. Yudhishthira held her and said, No, mother, you have not sinned. You have always spoken the truth and what you have uttered will also be true. We all five brothers will marry Draupadi. Grandfather Vyasa had already predicted of this. This is our destiny. And this is Draupadi's destiny. All the brothers' eyes lit up in joy. Yudhishthira knew that all his brothers had longed for Draupadi and if only Arjuna had married her, then there was a distinct possibility that they would have been jealous of him. This could even threaten the unity of the Pandavas. Just then, Krishna and Balaram entered the hut. The Pandavas were overjoyed to see them. Krishna bowed before Kunti, her aunt, and Yudhishthira, his cousin, and paid his respects. Yudhishthira asked, How could you recognize us? We thought we had a pretty good disguise. Krishna smiled and said, Fire cannot be kept hidden even if you try. We were so happy to see you. I knew heroes like you cannot be destroyed by a petty house fire. But seeing you live in the Sayamvara Hall, I felt much better. We hope soon your days of hardship would be over and your fame and prosperity would spread and grow like wildfire. But we must leave now, else people might become suspicious. After Krishna and Balaram left, the five brothers sat down to have their dinner while Draupadi served them. As usual, half of the food was served to Bhima and the rest was divided amongst the four brothers, their mother Kunti and Draupadi. After dinner, the brothers lied down to sleep on a straw mat on the floor. Kunti slept at their head, while Draupadi slept at their feet. The brothers chatted about the day's proceedings and about warfare and weapons, and soon they all fell asleep. 
Trishtadumna had been listening to all this secretly from outside the hut. He was quite convinced that the brothers were not Brahmins but were Kshatriyas or the warrior caste. From the discussion and demeanour, he was also convinced that the brothers must be of some royal order. He went back to the palace and shared his observations and thoughts with his father. He also said that Drupad's suspicion may be true, as these five men were most likely the Pandava brothers and the woman in the hut, their mother, Kunti. Drupad suppressed his excitement and said, Well then, let's invite them to the palace tomorrow and arrange for the wedding. Tomorrow we'll know for sure who these Brahmins really are. The next day, Drupad sent a priest to the Pandava's hut with the proposal. The priest said to Yudhishthira, Dear sir, our great king Drupad is overjoyed to see his daughter being won by a great hero. He is extremely anxious to know his son-in-law's identity as well as yours. He suspects that you are the great Pandavas. Is that true? Yudhishthira smiled and said, Your princess has been won by the most eligible person. Please tell your king not to worry. The priest then said, Our great king has invited you all brothers to a great feast in the palace. I have the chariots waiting outside. Please do come with me. We would also like to finalize the details of the marriage ceremony in the palace. Yudhishthira agreed. The Pandavas, along with Draupadi and Kunti, mounted the chariots and arrived at the palace where the king had arranged for a gala reception. As the Pandavas arrived, conch shells rang out, flowers showered from the skies, and hundreds of courtesans sang and danced around them to welcome their arrival. The king had arranged for a grand feast, where the Pandavas were treated with sumptuous food and drinks, along with many other guests. After the meal, the king took the Pandavas to a huge chamber where he had spread on tables heaps of gifts and presents. But to ascertain their identity, he arranged the gifts in a special order. On one table, he placed utensils, books and scriptures that were preferred by the Brahmins. On the next table, he kept goods that are of interest to traders and business people. And on the third table, he kept heaps of weapons and armour which could only interest a genuine Kshatriya or warrior. Drupad invited the Pandavas to pick whatever gifts they liked. The Pandavas right away walked to the table full of weapons and armors. They picked the weapons and examined them as expert warriors would. Watching this, Drupad had no doubt that these men were not Brahmins. They must be Kshatriyas. He confidently walked up to the Pandavas and said, If I have to trust my judgment, I would certainly say that you are not Brahmins. Rather, you are Kshatriyas and of royal order. But I cannot say for sure. So please, please do clarify my doubts. Who are you? Yudhishthira smiled and said, You are right, O revered king. We are indeed Kshatriyas of the royal order. We are the sons of the great king Pandu, the late king of Hastinapur. I am Yudhishthira and these are my brothers Bhima, Arjuna, Nakula and Sahadeva. Arjuna, the great archer, was the one who passed your stupendous test and won your daughter Draupadi. So be rest assured, your daughter is in good hands. She is the future queen of Hastinapur. And you are our revered father-in-law. Drupad was overwhelmed with emotion. His dreams have come true. Tears of joy ran down his cheeks. He somehow managed to control himself and said, Oh, oh, what a lucky man I am. How I long to see this day. We all heard about the fire in Varanavata and had feared the worst. To see you all in good health is a great reward in itself. And now, to have you, the great Pandavas, as my daughters-in-law, is a great honour and pride for the Panchal kingdom. Looking at Arjuna, Tripad said, Today is an auspicious day. I would like the marriage ceremony of my daughter with this great hero to be held today. I hope you agree. 
Yudhishthira said, Sure. But as the eldest brother, I'll marry Draupadi first. The king was taken aback a little. But he soon regained his composure and said, If that's what you desire, so be it. I'll gladly give my daughter to you or to any one of your brothers. Yudhishthira said, O king, you don't understand. We all five brothers will marry Draupadi. I'll marry her first, then Bhima, followed by Arjuna, Nakul, and then Shahadeva. King Drupad was flabbergasted. It took some time for him to catch his breath. He then, as calmly as he possibly could, said, But, but Yudhishthira, how could this be possible? You are said to be the incarnation of Dharma himself. You are the most righteous and virtuous man alive. How could you think of such an unholy proposal? As per the scriptures and traditions, a man can have multiple wives. But how can a woman have multiple husbands? Yudhishthira calmly said, It's uncommon, but not unprecedented. Our mother, the sinless Kunti, has approved of this marriage. And what she approves cannot be unholy. You can be rest assured, we won't do anything that is not in line with virtue. But Drupad was not convinced. He consulted his spiritual and legal advisors, but none of them could give him any satisfactory reasoning to justify Yudhishthira's claim. A crisis situation developed, and Draupadi's marriage was now in jeopardy. At this moment, when things were all falling apart, the great Rishi Vyasa arrived in Drupad's chamber. He called Drupad and said, Dear king, I will try to clarify your doubts. Come with me. He took Drupad to a private chamber and told him a story. Vyasa said, The Pandavas were the five Indras, or the gods of heaven, in their past life. Once Indra, the ruler of the heavens, along with his four compatriots and their consort, had upset Lord Shiva, with their arrogance. Shiva cursed them to be born as human beings on this earth. Shiva also ordered their consort, a beautiful celestial maiden, to be born in this world as Draupadi and marry the five Indras. So you see, King Drupad, this marital arrangement was preordained. Such a marriage may not be admissible among humans, but as I said, the Pandavas and Draupadi are not normal human beings. They are gods and are obeying the commands of none other than Lord Shiva. After hearing this story, Drupad had no more concerns. He gladly agreed to the proposal and ordered his ministers to arrange for the marriage ceremony. The entire city of Kampilya was decorated with flowers and garlands. The people of the city joined the festivities, which continued for five days. On each of the five days, Draupadi was given in marriage to each of the five brothers, starting with Yudhishthira, followed by Bhima, Arjuna, Nakula and Sahadeva. When Krishna got the news of the marriage, he sent many gifts of gold, silver and other precious stones and jewellery. The Pandavas continued to live in Drupad's palace, along with their mother Kunti and their newly married bride, Draupadi. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bonnet. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Zia. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata Podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any podcast catcher.